For non-Georgians, Aslan Apashidze is an unknown figure in Georgian history. Yet he, perhaps even more so than prominent Georgian politicians such as Presidents Eduard Chavarnadze and Mikhail Saakashvili, could be seen as a driving impetus for Georgia's 2003 Rose Revolution. Born in Batumi, Ajara in 1938 to a prominent family, Aslan Abashidze graduated from Batumi State Pedagogical University in 1975 and later obtained his master's in Tbilisi in 1984. His initial background was in linguistics and history. However, Abashidze quickly rose to political power during the mid to late 1980s. From 1984 to 1989, Abashidze was the minister of the Ajara Autonomous Republic. Abashidze also had a hand in writing the Georgian Independence Restoration Act of 1991 and was elected to the Georgian parliament representing the bloc Nishidoba, the peace. By the 1995 elections, Abashidze's self-led political party, Revival, which was centralized in his home region of Achara, became a major political force in Georgia, allying itself with President Chavarnadze's and then close Chavarnadze ally Jorabzhvania. The primary goal of Revival was to legitimize Abashidze's power and authority. By 1999, Abashidze's desire to keep power at the cost of Tbilisi's political stability became apparent. In an effort to prevent Abashidze from gaining influence outside Achara, Zhvania brought in Russian political consultants to help isolate Abashidze's revival party by presenting it as an enemy of the state during the 1999 and 2000 elections. In the 1999 elections, Abashidze claimed a 100% voter turnout in Achara. Despite Abashidze's iron grip of Achara, his control of the region proved too crucial for Shavarnadze and Zhvani to ignore and alienate. Just three years after they attempted to convince the Georgian people that Abashidze and his party were enemies to the state, they struck an agreement with deputies of Abashidze's revival party to support a union with Shavarnadze's ruling party. And, in return, Ajada was granted tax-free status. Saakashvili's rise to prominence in Georgian politics in the late months of 2003 introduced the demise of Abashidze. Saakashvili advocated for the doubling of pensions, the elimination of land taxation, and public health care for all. In doing so, he increased his anti shavadnadze rhetoric, including attacking Abashidze. What's more, Saakashvili was pro-West, pro-NATO, and vehemently anti-Russia. On the contrary, Abashidze was publicly pro-Russia. While campaigning in Batumi, the capital of Ajara, and therefore the heart of Abashidze's political sphere of influence, pro-Abashidze police officers beat Saakashvili supporters. In response, Saakashvili tied Abashidze to Shavarnadze. This would ultimately be Shavarnadze's political death knell. The November 2003 parliamentary elections were marred by electoral fraud and gross incompetence. The first major turning point towards the Rose Revolution was when Shavadnadze announced the results from Achara. At 11 p.m., the Central Election Commission announced that Revival had the most votes of any political party in Georgia, thereby granting it the most seats in Georgia's parliament. This was done despite Shavadnadze and the Central Election Commission fully knowing the level of control which Abashidze had over Achara's election committee and oversight bodies. In the face of such blatant corruption, Shavadnadze allowed Abashidze to have his way, therefore transferring the Georgian public's hatred of Abashidze onto himself. The ultimate reason for Shavadnadze's acceptance of Abashidze's rule and authority, even over Georgia's own Central Election Commission, is that Shavadnadze wanted revival support in Parliament. The second major turning point in the Rose Revolution was, again, brought by Aslan Abashidze. On the morning of November 17, 2003, the residents of Tbilisi woke up to thousands of pro-Abashidze protesters in the streets of the city. The protesters were, ironically, rallying for the protection of the Georgian constitution and national stability. The pro-Abashidze protesters joined forces with pro shavarnadze protesters and together rallied against the opposition movement which was led by Mikhail Saakashvili and Nino Burjanadze. In an effort to appease the dueling protests, on November 23rd, Shavarnadze held a special parliamentary session in which opposition parties had agreed that the parliamentary election's results would be annulled, and a new election would be held within months. While this session was occurring, 
Thousands of pro-Saakashvili protesters were marching outside the parliament building on Rustavelli Avenue. The protests culminated in Saakashvili's and Burjanadze's ousting of Shavatnadze from parliament, and then claiming themselves as the legitimate leaders of Georgia. The following day, Abashidze cut rail links with Georgia and accused Saakashvili of staging a coup. Almost immediately after Saakashvili assumed power, Saakashvili confronted Abashidze. The tete -a tete culminated on March 14, 2004, when Ajada's paramilitary forces prevented Saakashvili from entering the region. By March 18, Abashidze and Saakashvili struck a deal, wherein Abashidze would eliminate his paramilitary forces and hold elections for new Ajadan leadership. However, Abashidze ultimately refused to disband his forces. In the end of March, Abashidze destroyed the road links between Ajada and the rest of Georgia by demolishing the bridges along the roads connecting the two. Saakashvili retaliated by enacting a complete blockade of Ajada. Not only had Abashidze's act enraged Georgians, but it also proved to be the last straw for Ajadans, who, after around 10 years of rule under Abashidze, stormed the streets demanding his resignation. On May 6, 2004, Abashidze was forced to leave Georgia and fled to his second home in Moscow, while Saakashvili claimed victory in his second bloodless revolution. Despite Saakashvili and Shavarnadze having been on the forefront of Georgian politics, Aslan Abashidze's actions in Ajada were the ultimate turning points in toppling Shavatnadze. Shavatnadze's inability to control Abashidze, a rogue regional leader, highlighted Shavatnadze's perceived incompetence and corruption. For the reputation that the Rose Revolution has among Westerners, it can be argued that the primary grievance among Georgians did not arise out of dreams of democracy, but rather the collective disgust at Shavatnadze's willingness to appease Ajada's local leader, Aslan Abashidze. For more information about Batumi, Ajada, and the rest of Georgia, visit our website www.visiting-georgia.com. Thanks for watching.